Welcome to Brandstorm, the podcast that talks to the people behind America's brands. I'm Nancy Christopher, PR Director at Platypus Advertising. And I'm Rob Brennan, Vice President at Platypus, filling in for Dan Trzinski. Corporate wellness programs aren't new, yet research still shows that only 24% of employees who are offered a wellness program actually participate in one. Our guest today has set out to change that. Please give a warm welcome to Kristen Markey, founder of Nest Health Connections out of Colorado. Hi, Kristen. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Nancy and Rob, and thank you so much for having me on your program. I, I really, really love what you guys are doing. Well, it's great to thank have you. you, Kristen. Tell us a little bit about your company and how it got started. Okay. Um, well, prior to launching Nest Health Connections at the beginning of 2017, I had spent the previous 12 years working on the largest brands in fitness. Um, companies or brands like Nautilus, Schwinn, Bowflex, Stairmaster, and Universal. And I had a really good understanding for the fitness space and the trends that were taking place. But I firmly believe that fitness itself is only a small part of creating a healthy lifestyle. You need to take an, a holistic approach um, and look into your diet and your sleep and your mental health, um, the stress and anxiety in your life and movement and so much more. So I created Nest to help create healthy cultures within your workplace. So whether we're working with a large 7,000 person company or a team of 10 people, we always are true to the holistic model and, and focus on mind, body, and spirit. Why do you think the corporate participation rate is so low? Well, um, that's really the million dollar question. And I actually spent six months researching um, just that. But I think it comes down to two things. Um, first of all, if the senior leadership is not 100% behind the program, then there never will be progress. Um, I'm going to give you an example. One of the simple exercises we do with our clients is to promote walking meetings. And that actually means holding your meeting outside while walking, or it could be inside if it's a snowy day, rather we have than those. sitting in a conference conference room. Yeah, I know you have those. So Nancy, if you were off on a walking meeting with one of your colleagues strategizing on your next podcast and Dan comes into your office and doesn't see you and starts saying, where's Nancy? Why isn't she in your office? I need her now. <laughs> um, then the rest of the office is going to catch wind of that and they'll, they'll never take a walking meeting. So we're picking on Dan now since he's not here, but, um, <laughs> what I, what I'm trying to say is the senior leadership not only has to promote the wellness, but lead by example. And, and in this case, go on the walking meeting and, and take part in other programming. Um, the second thing really comes down to programming options. There are many companies out there who I like to say, check the box on wellness and will offer maybe a step track program or a fitness class here and there and don't really go past that. I really believe that you need to offer a variety of things that start appealing to the majority of employees. So, you know, a gardening program isn't going to appeal to somebody who wants to participate in a bike race. A nutrition program is going to appeal to one person and, you know, a yoga class is going to appeal to another so having a variety of things are so, so important. This is, this is fascinating. And I, I, what I want to know is um, what kind of incentive structures have proven to work? Rob, that is an awesome question. And primarily, um, companies have gone off of incentives, like you need to have incentives for something to work. And that is not necessarily true. Like those incentives don't necessarily promote change. We don't do a ton with incentives. We do a lot of contests, for example, but incentives can work to get people started in a program, but they don't necessarily take long-term, you know, long-term term change doesn't happen. Incentives like time off incentives are great incentive. Discounts on gym memberships are really good incentives. Gift cards and, and stuff like that are great. I mean, we use some incentives, but I, like I said, we use them kind of sparingly. Kristen, are there any statistics to show that companies with wellness programs actually perform better than others? There are tons of really great statistics on wellness. Companies usually see improved productivity, decreased Decreases in health insurance costs, decreases in absenteeism, reduction in sick leave and disability claims. Um, some specifics, the average um, performance boost is 15% with a wellness program. That's pretty big. Yeah, 
Yeah, 60% of people that participate say they see improved time management skills, mental performance, ability to meet deadlines, mood improvement. Yeah, that's kind of where I thought I, I thought morale would be the first kind of uh, major benefit is yeah, all of a sudden you, so you have face-to-face time with your coworkers that you probably don't get as much anymore. Yeah. I mean, I have this other statistics that says 66% of employees who were involved in a work wellness program were extremely or very satisfied with their group employee benefits and their company. So they believe that their company takes care of them. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And it's even showing a lot in um, recruitment. So right now with the unemployment rate being so low, it's an important part of, you know, your overall benefits package. And there's a stat that says 87% of job candidates consider wellness programs when choosing an employer. So that's a huge number. Yeah. And I could see that that would be a real great way to attract people to your company. Absolutely. But what co- what is the profile of these companies that are offering this? Is, this? is this larger companies or is it small, everything in between? It can be any size company at all. My smallest client is 10 employees so, and my largest company is 7,000 and anything in between. <laughs> and so in all industries, you know, like originally when I was writing my business plan, I'm like, oh, this is going to appeal to tech, right? All tech companies are going to want software tech, you know, those kind of companies are going to want wellness, but it's, that's not the case at all. It can be any industry or any size company at all. The one thing that the company needs to have is the leadership to build this healthy culture. I don't know. I'm curious. Are there any famous wellness programs out there that you could tell us about? Oh my gosh. I love looking at the programs at like Google or Netflix or Apple, some of those companies. I mean, I just read that Google has window boxes of herb gardens growing outside their office windows. So imagine you're sitting at your office and you just put your hand outside the window and and grab some mint and start adding it to your water or something. Yes, I I need a little cilantro for my salad. It's kind of on the the other spectrum uh, of their sleep pod program that I've heard they have. Yeah, I was going to mention that as well, that the spaces, for example, are some of the most important things that you can do for, for your employees. And you see that all the time in these big programs like the sleep pods and the relaxation rooms and meditation spaces and having all these Zen spaces for, you know, people to just take 15 minutes for themselves and decompress are really important. We And we do that kind of thing on a smaller basis. We don't have any sleep yeah. pods. We're recording but... inside of one right now. This is our, our Zen yeah. space, in our the habitat. Pod room. I love it. How do you go about approaching companies to consider a wellness program? Most of the time it comes from a senior leadership team that, you know, is excited about something like this. So all of my business has come from word of mouth and, you know, where we have gotten some really great testimonials and statistics of helping people. So those type of senior leaders are are definitely talking. But when you think about it, every company has different pain points, whether they're having a hard time recruiting employees or the retention is not great or, um, you know, we kind of get to know what their situation is with their health insurance as 50% of their employees on some anti-anxiety meds. So we kind of find out like what those pain points are. And we start discussing about how wellness programming can help improve things with their employees. So is it limited to fitness or what is the, what is oh, the range no. of, of how different your programs can, can vary in terms of what you're offering? You know, you bring up a good, a good point. Like it, it kind of, people think of fitness. Oh yeah, we have a fitness class or we have a gym at our, sure. and they'll, you know, equate that to the, to the wellness program, but we go well beyond that. So, you know, we'll do yoga classes and massage and a lot on education. So we'll do like a lunch and for lack of better words, some, most people know like a lunch and learn series where we cover things like nutrition and stress and, you know, how to get a better night's sleep and ergonomics and the the topics go on and on. But, you know, the education piece is really important. We also do corporate gardens, which has been one of the best things that I've ever worked on. And the satisfaction that we get from the employees on the gardening has been really exciting. 
but we'll look to spaces. Like I mentioned before, like the relaxation space is, is a big one um, where we'll take like an old lactation room <laughs> that somebody might have and put like a I don't think we have to- any of that here at Platypus. <laughs> For example, like you've got like an old supply closet. Well, we don't really need that many supplies anymore. All we need is our laptop, right? So there's no supplies. There's no paper closets anymore. Right. Take all that shelving out put a really cool massage chair in there and teach people how to use meditation app and so forth. So those spaces are important. We do smoothie bars. We'll utilize treadmill desks. And oh, I love it. Really I want to make sure Dan listens app. to this episode. Exactly. <laughs> the wrong one to be, yeah. you know, away. Oh, my God. Well, I love it's it. It's so and, fun. And you kind of get to a, a, a really kind of overarching theme here, which is this is about the whole person. It's not just about their heart rate or not just about the diet and what they're having for lunch. This is a this is a whole person initiative, it seems. Exactly. And you know what? We have had success stories where somebody, for example, will utilize the this is this is a real example. Somebody used the smoothie bar for two months. Every single day they came in, use the smoothie bar. The smoothie bar is only stocked with really super healthy fruits, vegetables. And this person lost 20 pounds over the course wow. of three months or something. It was a really short amount of time. They lost 20 pounds. From there, they went to a yoga class. They went to a group fitness class. They met with the personal trainer, but it just kind of perpetuated how they got into to wellness and how their wellness journey started. So it can start from any one thing. And that's why offering lots of options um, to appeal to a broad range of people is so important. Wow. So what exactly are the steps to creating a healthier work environment? I know you talked about it has to be from the top down, they have to be have the buy-in, but what mm-hmm. are the steps? Well, the steps can be really, really small, Nancy. I mean, and a lot of it is going pe- gonna to depend on the budget, right? And we work with people large and small of budgets of all sizes, but I mean, really, it can be really small steps. Things like that walking meeting that I mentioned, or encouraging water consumption, getting rid of candy bowls and pizza at lunch. (laughs) Oh, we have so many candy bowls here. It's not even funny. (laughs) Honestly, it's like process. Once you have the leadership that's committed to the process, one of the very first steps is surveying the employees. And one thing that comes out all the time is, well, it's really nice that you want to do this wellness program, but we've got all these candy bowls all over the <laughs> office and we offer barbecue on Fridays for lunches, you know? And so those kind of things, you have to kind of look at the whole company and the, everything behind it. And if you have employees that are not necessarily interested in wellness. Is there a way to kind of entice them in different ways so that they don't ruin it for everybody else? Yeah. And I mean, that really has to do with the types of programs that you offer. So we try to find things that appeal to everyone. And, you know, not everybody's going to be excited about fitness. Not everybody's going to be excited about yoga and meditation, but, you know, maybe they would be interested in a vitamin D challenge going outside for 15 minutes a day, or Ah. maybe they would be interested in meal planning, or maybe they, I mean, there's just so many different ways to get people in. And a lot of it is around education and even just just small little pieces of information throughout the day. Um, Are these programs covered by insurance? It does not have to be. It it does not have to be expensive at all. I mean, of course, if you're going to offer a multitude of classes every week that can can definitely add up. But simple things like creating some spaces. Um, we do a lot of smoothie bars where it's self-serve su- smoothie bars and we use um, Vitamix and and bags of organic fruits from the grocery store and people contribute $2.50 a smoothie. Things like that in smaller environments can go a long, long way. So you don't have to have a lot to make a big difference. Um, However, we do have several companies that the entire thing is paid for through their insurance. So, and a lot of that has to do with the negotiations that the, you know, your benefits team, they're making with their insurance carriers, but we have really pretty um, robust programs that are 
a hundred percent covered by insurance companies. And all we do is, you know, talk to the insurance company and tell them the kind of things that we're doing. And then we're able together, we're able to track some of the changes that we're seeing in the benefit, uh, the healthcare costs going down. So that's really exciting. So working with the insurance carriers and, and benefits teams can be really, really great for those larger companies that have a lot to spend. And are the insurance companies as receptive to the idea as, as it sounds like they could be? That's, that's interesting because yeah, yes, they're all interested in, you know, decreasing the costs of the insurance and sure. increasing the health of the employees. But a lot of the insurance companies have their own programs that they like to promote first. And most of those programs are all digital and, you know, you're going on a website and they've got an app or something like that. Hmm. Rarely are they in person. I know. And you have to get real motivated to do those things because Mm -hmm. I can't remember the last time I went on the app to get some education from it. Well, and part right. of the, part of the beauty of this is that it seems a little bit more personal and and uh, kind of tailored versus just a template for something else by yeah. a, an app or a checklist that isn't necessarily tailored to your business or your culture. Right. And along those lines, how hands on are you, Kristen, with these programs? We're very hands on. Like I like I mentioned, it's not a check the box wellness solution. We are very involved um, with the companies that we work with and and are pretty selective with the people that we work with. So we do get to know the employees really, really well, but we also have a digital program too. So for those companies that have, um, you know, regional offices or employees working out of their homes, we do offer video programs that are, that are made exclusively for that company and know the culture behind that company. And and then we have websites that back it up that is specific to that company. So, you know, would have like meal planning and such, um, you know, every week for that company and messaging for that company. So we're, we're involved. It's, it's an involved hands-on experience. <laughs> and does it require some handholding or is there generally a good buy-in on the front end of things? How long do you have to kind of help the company along until they're off their feet? You know, it is not a program where we put it together and and we kind of say, okay, you're ready to go. And we walk <laughs> away because that's, that's the whole thing with your, with your journey in, in health, that new things are happening all the time. So, you know, we want to be involved. Um, one thing that we do is every, every three months we'll kind of revisit and understand what the engagement levels are on all levels of the programming. So, you know, if something's not working, um, if we had a lot of people going to yoga and then now we don't have anybody going, then we make changes all of the time. So we are definitely involved and we are constantly making changes to the the programming and the experience to keep people excited about it. So Kristen, you're based in Colorado. Yeah. We're out here in Milwaukee. Can uh-huh. you help us here? Absolutely. So I just wanted wow. to say this. I, <laughs> First, well, first of all, I'm I'm from Milwaukee. My largest customer is actually based in Portland, so we do have companies all over the country, all, both coasts. And and I'm itching to get back to Wisconsin and actually create a regional office there. So so that's my goal within the next few months. Actually, is to to create an office in Wisconsin to help as many companies there as we can. There's a need everywhere. Yeah. I'd be glad to have you. Exactly. I think that would be so, so nice. It would boost my morale, Rob. You know how cranky I can be. Oh, please. (laughs) I'll take that for one second, Nancy. (laughs) So what's the best way to connect with you, Kristen? Well, you can go to my website, which is Nest healthconnections.com. So that's that's one way. And you can see all of the different programs that we have there and a lot of different testimonials and um, good stuff on the website. And you can contact me at Kristen at nesthealthconnections.com or LinkedIn is a good way. You can also find us on um, Instagram and Facebook. All right. Well, we'll put all those links uh, in our show notes. And thank you so much for joining us today, Kristen. This is great stuff. Love to have a wellness program at Platypus. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to be my first customer in Wisconsin. Yeah, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? (laughs)
Okay, and if you like what you've heard today, please don't forget to share, review, and subscribe to Brandstorm. And this is Rob Brennan along with Nancy Christopher at Platypus Advertising and Design, an awesome company that creates perceptions that influence choice for a variety of local, regional, national, and even global brands on a daily basis. We hope you'll join us next week for another episode of Brandstorm. Brandstorm.